Hello and welcome to another edition of Your County at Work, the show that brings you to the front lines of hardworking men and women of Newcastle County government. Today I'm happy to tell you that Kenneth Bolden Jr., Clerk of the Peace for Newcastle County, is in the NCC TV studio today to talk about the latest happenings in his office. Thank you so much for being here today. It's good to be here. How are you today? The good news is it's another good day, beautiful day in Newcastle County. Very good. Well, let me say before I get started on our walk down here to the studio, I was very impressed with your, bra your background in TV and radio. Well, so I know this is going to be a breeze for you. When I was a much younger man with a lot more Yesterday. energy. With a lot more energy. <laughs> Uh, I was. I had the pleasure of working both at Channel 12 in Wilmington at Fifth and Scott Street, mm -hmm. and then over at uh, Channel Two and Channel Two News for Comcast. So uh, that, and I had the uh, opportunity to teach broadcasting at Wilmington University. So uh, it's been a good career. Very good. But now you've decided that you're moving on. I don't want to say bigger and better things, but I, we might can say that you're the clerk of the peace now. Well, I I started my. Uh, public service career with Newcastle County in 1973 and if you're doing the math that means I'm old <laughs> and um, I've had I've been the county complaints officer I uh, headed code enforcement I was the public information officer I was an executive assistant uh, to uh, a couple county executives and then um, about 18 years ago I was elected to the office of clerk of the peace and uh, it's the best job I've ever had I know when you come to pay your visits, you're always so bubbly. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's a great job. <laughs> Nobody's complaining about potholes or street lights or taxes or anything else. Everybody that walks in the door is in love. Right, <laughs> exactly. So let's talk about exactly what your job, what you do at your job. Well, I, th I think I need to set a foundation for that. Um, we're the marriage bureau. And uh, the uniqueness of that particular job is, is when I came here a number of years ago, the clerk of the peace uh, did a variety of things. They ran all the school board elections. They handled licensing for a lot of contractors. Uh, we monitored junk dealers and pawnbrokers. Anything that they had <laughs> that they didn't know where to put or what to do with the ended up in of this peace office. Did it. So through a, um, a uh, a process of weeding that things out. Now everything we do is exclusively related to the marriage business, the marriage bureau. The, the clerk of the peace is a person, it's an elected office, mm -hmm. who oversees the marriage bureau. Uh, the clerk of the peace is really and has long been historically one of the oldest elected row offices in government throughout Delaware. It dates back with other titles all the way to colonial times. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it, it has done a variety of jobs for the courts and the government, and county governments, but the uniqueness of this particular job is that um, in other states when you want a marriage license, you go either to a county clerk or a court clerk, mm -hmm. and you want a ceremony, a civil ceremony, you go to a justice of the peace. Well, years ago, Newcastle County combined the two functions and the two positions, which is how we get clerk of the peace. Constitutionally, we really have the functions and responsibilities of both offices. So it's, it's a, now we're the only state in the nation that has a clerk of the peace. Okay. So the, the uniqueness of that is, is when we were dealing with uh, conversions into civil unions and same-sex marriages and the data and how we do all of that, I was invited to speak to a uh, conference in Washington, D.C. involving my peers from all over the nation to tell them how we did it so successfully right here in Newcastle County. When I did that, the, there was about 300 people at this luncheon, and I was the keynote speaker. And when they went to introduce me, the gentleman came up and he said, I've never seen this title, what are you? And I said, I'm the clerk of the peace. <laughs> and he said, wow, he said, I've never heard of that. He said, what do you do? And I told him, just like I told you. And he said, well, are there a lot of you? And I said, well, in <laughs> Delaware, there's three of us, one in each county. And he said, how many other states have them? I said, none. I said, we're the only state that has a clerk of the peace. And out of the three in Delaware, by tenure, I'm the senior clerk of the peace. 
So when it came time for him to introduce me, he walked up to the podium and he said, ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to have a special guest with us this afternoon. We have the Senior Clerk of the Peace for the United States of America. <laughs> okay. 300 people stood up and applauded. They have no idea what I did, right. but they were just glad to be there and get a free meal. Right. That's funny. Okay. So let's say there's um, lovebirds out there in our viewing audience and they want to get married. What are the steps that need to be taken to come to your office? It is so easy. It is so easy to do. First of all, if they need information. They want to know what to bring, when to come in when we're open. We have a toll-free 24-hour, 24-7 telephone information line. And that number is 395-7780. You can dial it anytime, day or night, and find out everything you need to do. What time we're open, what documents you need to bring along, uh, what, answer, what questions you need to be prepared to answer. In addition to that, you can go to the county website and then click on the little link that takes you to the clerk of the peace office and it will tell you everything. It's very simple. In, in brief, if you want to get married in the state of Delaware, you must be 18 years of age. And you must have a photo ID. So we can prove that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Now, if you've been married before, you need to bring the certified copy of your original divorce decree, the one with a raised seal, or the original divorce mm -hmm. decree, so we can show that you're free to go on to the next chapter in your life. Now, if you've widowed or you're a widower, you bring a certified copy or the original death certificate. Okay. And then once we scan those and digitally record them into our, then we process your, your license and then you're ready to go. Okay, is there a fee involved? There is a fee. The fees are uh, for, for state residents. Uh, for a license is $50. And if you're an out-of-state resident, the fee is $100. Now, if you want us to do your ceremonies, then the fee for us to uh, officiate your ceremony for Delaware residents is $50. And the fee for the um, non-residents is $100. Now, whether you're a resident or non-resident, you're gonna pay a $20 recording fee. Now, to tell you what that's for, when you leave with your license, you go out and you have a ceremony in your church or your home or a country club or wherever, the officiant mails back that license. Well, that's where our work also begins because from there we document when you were married, who married you, where, who your witnesses were, how old they were, what time it took place, all the data that, you know, that proves, in fact, that you were legally married and we enter that in our system and then we upload it and send it to Vital Statistics, that's, uh, that's the $20 charge goes to, to supplement that administrative process that we do. Understood. Okay, so do you perform ceremonies? I have done personally over 12,000 individual ceremonies at last count. And I think now we're probably between 12,000 and 15,000 that I personally perform wow. myself. Uh, my chief deputy and uh, other associates in the office who've been sworn as deputies, in my absence, also have the authority to do them. But um, it's, it's been a wonderful ride and I, I've enjoyed every day of it. I've had the um, privilege of witnessing a few marriages there in your chapel. It's very nicely set up. Well, we have two. We oh, have two. Okay. We have one, and uh, so the couple that come to get, coming in get to get married, they can bring up to 30 guests mm -hmm. with them. And there's no charge, no extra charge for that, to share that special moment in their lives. Then we have a smaller, more intimate wedding room that handles about 12 to 15 people. Okay. And it's Wedding Wednesdays, correct? Well, we call it Wedding <laughs> Wednesday, but the truth is we do weddings every day of the week. Uh, okay. with the exception of the weekends and holidays. And the reason we do it on Wednesdays is because we try to book at least, oh, I would say 15 or 16 weddings every Wednesday. And we're booked all two or three weeks ahead. And the reason we do that is because when people come in with that many guests and witnesses and everything else that, that comes along with it, we provide for additional security in the building um, to move people from place to place. It's sort of like a little love assembly line. <laughs> So it's easier to, to, to manage all of that at one time. Now, if a couple has a particular need or a special reason where they need to be married at one o'clock on a Tuesday or at three o'clock on a Thursday or military personnel mm -hmm. or any other circumstance, we, we have means to accommodate that. 
but just for practical reasons. We try to put it as many as together as we can. Okay. You mentioned you've done thousands of ceremonies. Do any one or several of them stick out in your mind? Well, it's either the ones that were uh, really special for some reason mm -hmm. or for those that just um, blew up in my face while we were there. I mean, I've had situations, I had a bride, um, I, I, I was doing a ceremony in the office in Wellington and realized that um, the tops of my shoes were wet and I was standing in a puddle and I realized that the bride's water broke oh and that goodness. she was pregnant and we, uh, we left the city <laughs> county building and continued the ceremony at the maternity room at the Christiana Hospital. That this is a true story. Oh, that's a very true story. <laughs> oh my I've done ceremonies, uh, uh, deathbed ceremonies, sadly, at hospice oh. facilities. I've done uh, other ceremonies in uh, delivery rooms, in hospitals. I have done them at uh, every fire hall and garden and country club in, in Newcastle County. I've been at um, officiated ceremonies where people have died. Uh, there were two deaths in my career. Uh, there was one birth. And there were a couple fights along the way, not to mention the fact that I've had a groom walk out in the middle of the vows and just look at me and say, I can't do this, and walk out the door. Uh, we were up Wait a minute, let's stop. how did you handle that one? Well, there wasn't much I could do right there. He looked at me and he just said, I'm sorry, I just can't do this, and walked out the door and left his bride and the guest standing there with me in the front. It was an awkward moment to say the least and uh, after spending about an hour with her privately and her family, they understood that maybe that moment of crisis could have been the best thing that could have happened exactly, to her. Exactly, most definitely. I was at a fire hall standing up front with the grooms, uh, with the groom and the groomsmen, and uh, the wedding march played and the, uh, the bride never walked down the aisle. She got back in the limousine and left. So there have been interesting moments in this job. <laughs> Very, it just sounds like a reality TV show. It would be absolutely incredible. <clears throat> we had to call security into our office more than one time because there were arguments that got physical between the two applicants, the bride and the groom, as to who was going to pay for the license. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sure, hopefully, he paid for the license. Uh, they they, we, they, they left. Oh. They, walked, they couldn't settle the argument. We asked them to go out in the hallway and figure it out and bring it back in, and they never came they back. They never came back, so that was probably best that they didn't come if they couldn't you gotta resolve think so. that. You've got to think so. I mean, yeah. if, you've, if you get into an argument over who's going to pay $50 for a document who's go that's going to sort of seal your, your life, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you shouldn't have been there in the first place. Very true. Your hours of operation. Well, the office, uh, the county offices in the city county building are open from 8.30 to 4.30, but we have to do some startup work to get ready for all that. And uh, we actually process applications for licenses uh, starting at around 9 a.m. up to approximately 11.30 a.m. Okay. Then we have a lot of work that we do, backup work on our server and everything. We start again at 1, and we do that up until about 4.00. So um, we, we, serve, we really reserve the first half hour and the last half hour of the day to do the administrative stuff that we have to do in-house. You don't need an appointment, though. You just walk in, and we okay. got everybody there to take good care of you. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we end our segment? I would just like to uh, add that there's a lot of exciting things going on in our office right now. Uh, we have gone from... Uh, the traditional opposite sex marriage to civil unions mm -hmm. and even before that we had a transition with domestic partnerships involved mm -hmm. and now we have uh, same-sex marriage so under marriage equality uh, marriage is marriage period we don't have any other labels marriage is marriage everyone gets the same marriage license the same documents and the same uh, personal treatment I mean we get to work with people on the most special significant important day of their lives so we do everything we can to make it a special day for them. That's important. And we, we handle all of that. We're, we're starting a new service now. Where is it? We find that we're, we're marrying people from all over the world. Somehow they end up here in Wilmington <laughs> and we're doing marriages for them. So we have uh, subscribed to a um, translation service 
that we can do through Skype and right there so we can actually do the interview process in about 200 different languages. We have people on staff who speak a couple different languages or are bilingual and we also have to interpret documents that they bring mm -hmm. us that we might have difficulties. We can do all that including American Sign Language. So uh, we're, we're very progressive. We have couples that come in that say, well, we wish mom and dad could have been here, or my sister, or my brother, or my coworkers. Well, we can help them because in our wedding rooms, we have cameras mounted. And we can broadcast their ceremony on the web so they can tell their guests and friends to just tune in and they give them the password. And it's just like sitting in the room watching it happen. Very good. T technology. It's a wonderful thing. Very good. Well, I want to thank you so very well, much for coming being on. Here. Fun being here. I'd love to come back again. We'll definitely have you back. Okay, that brings us to a conclusion of another episode of Your County at Work. I hope you learned something today. Please keep in tune to NCC TV to learn more about your local government, Newcastle County. For County Executive Tom Gordon, Executive Producer Jim McDonald, Director Tony Prado, and NCC TV crew members Steve Berg, Lisa Lancaster, Josue Ortega, Rod Paolo, and Franklin Cook. Thank you so much for watching. This is Wayna Dobson signing off until next time.